with special guest star, Shiryuki. Hello everyone, welcome back to Star Player One. I'm Brand Knight. And I'm Shiryuki. And we're playing Code Realize, Bouquet of Flowers. Last time we left off is our heroine who is called a monster because everything she touches dies. And the Royal Guard was sent to capture her until an interruption happened. And now there's this mysterious figure sitting on top of the ruins. So let's get right into it. We did turn down the sound a little bit too for the music. A thin body wrapped in formal attire with a top hat perched on his head. A walking stick in his hand. He looks as if he's about to tend a mass masquerade masquerade ball. But why? Strangely, nothing about this scene sh strikes me as out of place. Fantastic work, gentlemen. His cloak flutters in the wind as he stares down at us. Her Majesty must be proud that her armor royal guards have come all this way to kidnap out for kidnapping. How dare you, you imp you impug our name? Who are you? The name is Austin Lupin. No need to be shocked, says I'm merely your average dashing gentleman thief. Lupin, as the man standing above us shouts his name, I feel it carving into my heart. A thief? You look like scum. What do you want from us? Wait, a tick? I've heard of this man. Some sort of burglar who works in Paris. I am impressed. You're quite right. My presence is here is quite an honor. You lucky gentlemen will witness my handiwork with your very own eyes. What's more? The man calling himself Lupin looks at me. I feel his piercing gaze through his mask. Mademoiselle, can you hear me? I stare at him silently. I do have a confession to make. My purpose for being out here on this lovely night is you, dear lady. I've come to take you away. Take me away? Now, don't you fret, mademoiselle. I have come here to rescue you from the hands of these dogs and with great style. Watch. You have put in a cuff for a lowly robber to stand before the apprentices. Prestigious British Royal Guard is inexcusable. All of you, capture this man! Yes, sir, everyone prepare to fire! Right, take aim! Wait, no! Fire! Ah! The shadow dances strictly as the soldiers open fire. Many of them must have hit. The shadow collapses to the ground. I'm holding my breath. Idiot! I said to capture him! Why would you give the order to fire? Because he says he is, then the, only, then the one and only Austin Lupin can never be captured, not even by the entire police force of Paris. He had the soldiers to be brought, he had to be brought down, and quickly, or else he would have stolen the monster. That, that man, Lupin, did he really just die now? You cats, you, you gone done it. You ended my brilliant life. Cut shot too soon. <laughs> he sits up howling with laughter. What is happening here? How is he alive after being shot so many times? Captain, look out! Before that soldier can say more, Lupin's body erupts into a brilliant light, blinding me with its glare. At the same time, a series of explosions rock the ground. The carriages around us are in disarray. What's going on? What kind of trick is this? Another attack! We must have an accomplice hiding somewhere. Calm down, he's likely planning these bombs before we got here. Don't allow him to fool you, this thief is acting alone. The captain's clear voice and reason have no effect on the men. The smoke from the explosions does not clear, but continues to thicken around us. Soon it is difficult to see. Where is he? Where did he go? The, soldier sh the soldiers shout in confusion. Suddenly a shadow appears before me. I almost cry out, but the man raises a finger to his lips. Did I startle you? My apologies. Fear not. I am not a ghost. That was just a trick. He grins and holds out his hand. Take my hand, mademoiselle. Shall we make our great escape into the night? 
N no. Don't touch me, please. You'll die from the poison. I'm aware of it. But that only like comes from skin contact, doesn't it? And your gloves block the poison, do they not? Yes, but I... He suddenly pulls me by the arm. I will be alright. Trust me. He pulls me to him with a compelling strength that his slender frame belied. For a moment, I fear he will melt, and I stare at him in terror. But... You see? I'm unarmed. Yes. He looks back at me with an, with an excited smile. A smile that seems to totally unfitting for the current situation. Relax, my lady. A beautiful face like yours is wasted without a smile to go with it. Now leave this all to me. There's nothing to be afraid of. The great Austin Lupin always gets what he wants without fail. As he talks, he pulls me straight beside him and looks up, looks about us happily. Time for the final touch. The what? I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> what are you doing? That scoundrel has escaped to the south. All of you, grab your guns and go after him. Move, move, move. See what I did there? Amazingly, Lupin's voice sounded exactly like the. That of the captain, leading heart. Yes, captain. You heard him. Men, south. Go, go, go. You fools. That was a trick. Get back here. The real captain shouts out through the smoke. Liar. How dare you impersonate me. I am the real captain. Men, don't be fooled. That was Lupin talking just now. I'm here in double to Captain Leonhardt. We can't tell who is it, who's who in this smoke. Everyone just around the monster. By the time the soldiers began to gather around us, Lupin had picked me up and ran out. I look back at the smoke still rising behind us as we rush through the moonlit grass. The only thing I feel now I feel now is Lupin's arms holding me through my clothing. I don't know how far we ran. Before I knew it, we were on a track in the forest. Alright, we should be safe now. Are you worried? Don't be. I left some fake footprints behind. I'm probably completely lost right now. Another caper completed. <laughs> I truly am a genius. Lupin stretches and looks up at the night sky. I follow his gaze. How long has it been since I last stared at the stars? Not just through the window in my room, but in the fresh air. The wind brushes against my cheek. Even though I've seen this so many times to be bored with it, now it feels beautiful. <laughs> Lupin appears to be shaking as he focuses on the sky. What's the matter? <laughs> Lupin? <laughs> oh, I'm on the way! Did you see their faces? Real guards! <laughs> They're nothing compared to me! That captain was all you fools! He's tricking you! <laughs> They're completely baffled, don't you? What's the matter? You hurt? No. Did someone hit you as we were escaping? Where are you hurt? You don't have to be hiding from me. I shake my head. It's not pain. It's sadness. I was ready for death, but here I am. I can't touch anyone. I'm a monster who is any, anyone around me. My life serves no use to anyone. Oh. So you're not hurt. Good, good. What is it? Tell me, what has you so despondent? Who are you? Huh? Oh, pardon me. I do not suppose I have informally introduced myself. Lup Lupin bows as if on stage. Allow me to present myself. Austin Lupin. For reasons I cannot disclose, mademoiselle, I have come to steal your heart. My heart? Yes, literally. But I won't take it for free. It's not my style to leave a beautiful woman disappointed. In exchange for your heart, I will grant you one wish. A wish? Indeed, mademoiselle. The humble thief promises you in all sincerity that he will grant you a single wish. A wish. My heart responds to his words. I have realized what I most desire. A wish tucked deep within my heart that I forbade myself to even think of. It bubbles up into my mind. I have never touched another person. Not once in my entire life. I resigned myself to a life that long ago 
like that and came to terms with it long ago. As my father said, I would be alone forever. But I want to touch you. I want to feel you, your warmth. The words come out before I can stop them. A touch. I see, so you... He stares at me, seemingly deep in my th in thought. Is it impossible? No. Lupin smiles confidently. He kneels down, takes my hand, and smiles. Your wish is my command, mademoiselle. I, Austin Lupin, do swear that I will grant you your desire. The moon shines brightly ab up above. Oh, how beautiful it is. How have I never seen it in the way before? And that's going to show that intro that we just saw in the last episode. Which we're going to skip because we've already seen it. <laughs> you already seen it too. Chapter 1. London Steam. This is also a, a steampunk world. Where it's like kind of that London Victorian style. I had a dream. Yes, a dream. A dream about long ago. When I awoke, father was gone. I still have father. I must wait for him. I have no other memories, and I don't even know who or what I am. But this doesn't sadden me. He had left a note for me at the mansion. It had a number of rules written on it. Never leave this mansion. I will come back for you. I promise. Lastly, it said this. You must never break these rules, no matter what. If you do, nothing but misfortune will come, because... You are a monster. Hey, at least you can stop that time. Hey, <laughs> but I, I broke those rules. That's what caused this to happen. People chased me and called me, called me a monster. I even brought misfortune down upon those who have accepted me and tried to love me. And since then, I have kept myself shut in that room for long, for a long, long time, because I am a monster. Until the day I die, I must sit right there and wait for Father to return. That is what I believed. The sound of birds tripping slowly raises me from my dream into consciousness. I feel a gentle breeze blowing. I'm not in the room anymore, that comforting yet lonely cradle. It comes back to me. Lupin took me away. I open my eyes and see a field of grass stretching as far as I can see. Ah, you're finally awake! Why do you look so stunned? I see. Is it because I'm too handsome to believe? I get that a lot. Every time I look in the mirror, in fact. <gasps> oh my, who is this dashing young man on the other side of the glass? All the time. It's not that. Huh. I suppose Seymour isn't your thing. Why do you look so surprised then? Don't tell me you forgot about yesterday. I woke up and you were right in my face. It was something of a shock. You were too close. You're dressed differently too. That was a little unexpected. You look like a different person. <laughs> I get it. I wanted to see you surprised. You did? Why? Isn't it obvious? I need to see some expression on your face other than sad and or blank. And why is that? We're going to be in each other's company for quite some time. It's important that we get to know each other better. What do you mean? You're full of questions, aren't you? It's because, well, why don't we have something to eat first? Just a nibble. Lupin lays a cloth down over the grass and places a basket on it. This was meant to be last night's supper, so it's cold now, but anything's good if you're hungry enough. Isn't that right? Lupin places a sunny side up egg on a piece of toast and hands it to me. What's wrong? Aren't you hungry? I haven't shared a meal with any another person in a while. This is also new. Ah, I see. You've been living alone all this time. It's just an egg on toast, for heaven's sake. There's no need for table manners, so eat up. And it tastes great. He takes a bite of his toast and looks over at me. He tilts his head as if noticing something for the first time. Oh, I never asked. Can you eat after all with the whole poison and everything? Yes, I can eat. I bring the toast up to my mouth and take a bite. Chew, swallow. That's good to know. Does it melt in your mouth? I shrug. 
It starts to become mushy right away. Mush mushy, eh? But I can taste it, and this, it's very good. I feel the flavor spread through my mouth. Well, that's good to hear. One of our group, one of our group, Emperor, is very much into cooking. He makes his own bread from scratch. Supposedly, he adds his own hidden flavors. After one bite, I couldn't stop. I had forgotten what it was like to eat for so long, and delicious food has a way of bringing happiness. I think you like it, Shiryuki? Mmm. <laughs> Don't talk of your mouthful. I swallow my curtain mouthful and ask again. How do you know my name? You were uh, on my mission. I'm making sure to study up on my targets with my eyes. Study up? How did you find out about me? I happened to procure some confidential material from the British government. Procure? Well, steal if you want to be more precise. There's nothing I can't steal. Money, jewels, or information. Why did the government have information about me in secret files? This is just one of many questions I have, but I need to know about this man. So, you're really a thief. If you're going to use that word, I'm going to have to ask you to use the word amazing first. An amazing thief. <laughs> exactly. Austin Lupin, the master thief and robber supreme. I have plans for my name to go down in history. I wonder what the difference is between a thief and a robber. Isn't stealing bad? Huh? Well, in general, yeah. Yeah, it is. But I'm a thief of a heart of justice, so that's not really a problem. Thief and justice seem to be a contradiction. This, this, this. A handsome man is always riddled with some sort of contradictions, don't you know? His answer doesn't really make sense to me, but I nod and turn my attention back to my food. Seen here in the warm sunlight, the meal becomes entrancing. 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 The taste of the of the egg with Lincoln's cherry voice is somehow very soothing. Once I collect my thoughts, I take a better look up at Lin Lupin as he eats his eggs on toast. I have another question. How am I so handsome? <laughs> That's a mystery that not even I can solve. That's the second time we've had this conversation. This man, it's amazing how much, how much confidence he has. That's not it. Those men, the ones from yesterday, where were they trying to take me? Hmm. One moment. Alright, it's too much to take in all at once, so I'll try to keep it simple. First, these men were after the horo... horologium. horo -wodium? Lupin becomes very serious. It's a source of unlimited energy. A heart that beats forever. That's what the horologium is. This gem is completely impossible to create using modern technology. But the secret file said that one man succeeded. The process he used to do so is unknown. The man buried the gem within the body of his own daughter. <laughs> his daughter, you mean? That would be you, Shiryuki. I don't know anything about my father. Do you know him, Lupin? I stare at him in surprise, and he looks back at me with some surprise as well. Of course I do. Anyone who lives in Britain knows. Anyone is, yeah, everyone knows about him. What's more interesting is why you don't know anything about him. He is your father. I... I can only remember two years of my life. Two years, huh? Yes. I woke up in the mansion two years ago. All I knew that I had to wait there. That father would come for me. And yet, I broke the rules that he laid down for me once in the past. I still regret it. Lupin looks at me questioningly and I speak up again. Even though I don't remember much, I do know some things. I read the books that were in the mansion, but... I see, so you have you know, nothing in the outside world. You have knowledge, but no life experience. I was waiting for father all that time. He's the only thing I have. Please, Lupin, I want to know more about my father. He looks at me for a while, then nods. Alright, I'll give you a brief overview. You don't need to know this to move forward anyway. First off, your father is a scientist by the name Isaac Beckford. Does that name sound familiar to you? I shake my head. He's a scientist who has changed the course of history. 
He has been called the modern day Prometheus. Prometheus? In Greek myth, he brought fire to humanity. Isaac has had that much of an impact on the revolution of modern society. Revolution of society? I think I read about that in the book. Was it called the Neo Steam Engine? Oh, so you know of it. That invention led to a massive expansion of Britain, Britain's industrial and military power. Isaac became Britain's military technology advisor and developed a number of powerful new weapons as well as Steel London, but he never saw the completion of Steel London. He simply disappeared one day after appointing a successor to his position. This all seems like a story about a far, far away land that, and doesn't sound real. That man is really my father? I'm we'll to have to stop it there. Oh, it's getting interesting. So we, so this girl, Shiryuki, has a gem inside her that can create unlimited energy. That's why everyone's trying to get it. Hmm. Interesting. And one thing I was always, I was also wondering, my mind, so her skin is like constantly, you know, she emits poison from yeah. her touch of skin. Does she have like a clear complexion? Like, is that is her skin always like naturally like fair and perfect because? The poison like melts away any germs or any, or any dirt or anything that could get into her pores. I guess that makes that'd sense. That'd be a cool <laughs> ability. I said I, they said she had perfect skin. I was like, I wonder how. Uh, I was like, oh, maybe that's it. Maybe she's just some. That's what you need to do, people. Is coat yourself in poison and you'll have perfect skin. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> if you're liking these videos so far, like, comment, subscribe down below. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next Star Player 1 episode. Bye! Bye.